All right, hello everybody. This is the third video and it should be the final video with regard to fabbing up the alternator bracket. The prior video, I just added a lot of detail around what, it's, what it takes to, to machine a part like this out of billet. You know, in hindsight, I probably should have bought that, that four inch a uh, bandsaw from Harbor Freight. They had it on sale for under 200 bucks. I'm going to need that bandsaw when I custom fab up the exhaust and you know I simply could have could have made some nice cuts with that that product and and speed this process up but you know I'm going to continue on uh, like I said in the prior video I'm going to change my technique a little bit so I can gather up some speed and I'm going to drill, you know, mill a channel, drill some holes. That way I can shave down the block on one side and then flip it over, align it with the drill so I get a perfect match and then drill out the other side. So we're going to see if that technique works and if that works. That's really the way I'll, I'll machine out the rest of the part. Okay, so stay tuned. All right, here's the next segue. Um, Trying to drill some holes along this this line that I milled and drill all the way down there. That'll cut out a lot of the material, and then I'll be able to more quickly go through the go through the block. At least that's the plan. Let's see how it works out. Okay, so that I think worked out pretty well. I did uh, four holes. They went all the way through to the other side of the channel. So now I'll grind this out with the shorter mill bit down to about half and then I'll flip it over and then I can use these holes to guide exactly where the channel is on the other side and use the shorter bit to grind the other side down. That'll work a lot better than trying to use that long mill bit that I bought. It just doesn't doesn't work well in this, this machine. Okay, here we go. Uh, so semi according to plan, I used the shorter mill bit and I shaved this down very quickly. And with the area that's been drilled out, it went really quick. So then I figured, you know what, it's going good. Let me try this longer bit again and I put it in there. And I don't know what is wrong with this thing, but it literally caught on the side, shifted the whole block and took a chunk out. Now, this time I was a bit smarter and kept the you know kept more of a gap between where the actual line is and it turned out the gouge butted right up against the against the line so you know i'll clean this up and you know i can i still have enough room to to shave this down a bit so it's not a big deal but it just shows you how quickly things can get pretty screwed up so anyway uh what i'm going to do is i'm going to flip this block over i'm going to use these holes as the guides to align it on the other side and then I'll use the shorter the shorter bit to drill it down and uh, we'll take it from there okay a lot of patience you need a lot of patience to do this this is probably the world's most boring YouTube video but for the sake of completeness I'm showing everybody what it takes to to make one of these things when you don't have the really the right equipment but we'll get through it Okay, here we go. You can see this is, uh, we turn the block over, and these are our alignment holes. Uh, but before I align it, uh, what I want to do is I want to shave this whole area down so I can get the head, of, the head of the mill down deeper into the block, and that shorter bit will be able to meet us halfway here, and then we'll be, we'll be in good shape. Okay, so this is how we're lining this up, so we'll make sure that each side mates up with the other side so so that goes in nice and smooth and then I line it with the, sorry for the shaky camera but there we go a little better look at that Ooh. okay right in so that is at the same angle as the other side so now we're going to get milling, and it should meet up, and it should be very close match. And this piece will be done, at least this section of the piece will be done. Okay, so I finished cutting that second section out. I actually cut this away, uh, just so we can take a look at how it came out. I'm trying to preserve as much as this outside case as possible, so 
I can clamp it on the mill very securely and grind everything out around it. But let's turn this over. And, you know, basically this is where I had the mishap with that large, with the long mill. But other than that, you can see by drilling those holes through and being able to align the block on both sides on the mill, I mean, it really came out, you know, very even. Now, these imperfections, I'll, uh, you know, when it's face up, I'll grind it down on the mill and it'll look perfect. Now, luckily, I learned my lesson doing this channel, and I started quite a bit away from, from the actual line, and you can see the curve just touches that line, but, you know, basically the hole is going to be about here, so I got plenty of material here. I just grind it down and make it look good uh, once the bracket is uh, is near completion. Okay, uh, not sure about the next step, but just wanted to show you the progress. Okay, so here we are ready for the next step. I did a little thinking about the approach and because the guide hole approach works so well on this on this line, I figured I would use the same thing to cut out this line, this line, and this line. And after that, I'll really chop the sides off and then I'm ready to finish the bracket. Uh, the only issue I see is, you know, if we flip this over, you know, the reason why the shorter bits were able to meet in the middle is because I, w I had this whole area of the block shaved down. In this case, I can't do that because these holes come close to the bracket that, you know, needs to stay intact. So I'm going to have to revert back to, you know, the bigger, the bigger mill, which, you know, is, has been malfunctioning a bit. But what I did was I left a little more room just in case I have an issue with that bit. And I'll just be extra careful and I'm only going to use it for the very, you know, the very last part the very last part of the uh, <clears throat> the milling. So I'll hold my breath and hopefully I'll get this all carved out and I'll show you the results. All right, well, I figured this video would be worth showing. Uh, let's see, so you can see I've, you know, used this drilling technique, which actually I really like now. And you can see these uh, carves are nice and clean. This is what I envisioned uh, originally instead of this. You know, I wasn't careful locking down the mill, and then I used that giant mill, and it just sort of chopped up some things. But this is working pretty good. So I'll show you a peek down here. So you see how we have that hole there? So the drill goes nice and smooth. I use this as the guide, and then what I would do is I would just move this over, and then it'll line up right there. So that's how I get the exact angle I need so that when I flip it over, I get the identical angle on the other side. So all in all, I mean, it's really starting to take shape. Uh, my approach now is I'm going to carve this out. I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to carve the rest of that angle out. And then I'm going to cut both sides here with the same technique. And then I'll be ready to chop the sides off. So we are getting close to... Uh, you know, to be, I, I would say at this point, I'm more than halfway done. And I'm feeling a lot more confident that this is going to come out well, where doing these couple angles uh, was a little nerve wracking and it wasn't really going that well, but I'm feeling like I'm on track at this point. All right, making some good progress here. I finished cutting out this piece, this piece, and this piece. You know, I've been using this 3 8 inch bit and in the last video I mentioned I would get about halfway through and then I need to uh, switch over to, you know, I call this the T-Rex or the Tyrannosaurus Rex bit because it just chews everything up. I was afraid I'd have to use this to get to the very middle of the block, but it turns out I had a quarter inch longer bit available to me and I was able to use this to finish the center carving and I will say the machine handles a quarter inch bit much better. The machine doesn't shake, it cuts much smoother so I'm going to use this smaller bit where I can to finish the part up. Uh, but anyway let's see, uh, 
what are we going to do next? I think I'm going to cut out these sides next and then chop the sides off and then clean the part up and finish it up. Okay, so stay tuned. All right, time for the next update. Uh, as you can see, I've made a lot of progress. Uh, I've uh, you know, cut out the top two channels. I used that quarter inch longer mill bit and it milled very smooth. I mean, it, you know, this was done on purpose, but I'll actually uh, finish this off with the sanding wheel and this will come out perfect. So no issue there. Uh, basically where we're at, let me turn this over. The next thing to do, I, I really want to get this to the point where it's just the shape of the bracket and then I can put it in a vise and finish it off. But I, I have a little more machining to do. So I'm going to drill this area out and then I'm also going to drill some holes so that I can machine this curve around and then I'll just sort of chop off the end with with the saw. And then once I'm done that with that, I'll come back to the next segue and then you'll see how I finish the part up. But we are certainly getting there, making a lot of progress, uh, feeling good about completing this uh, this bracket, not having to remake it. All right, well, as you can see, we've made a lot of progress on the bracket. We finally chopped the sides off. And, you know, for the most part, this is, uh, this is the shape. So, so far, so good. I'm very happy with the way it's coming out. Uh, so, a couple more things we need to do. Uh, I think the next thing I'm going to do is to clean up, clean up the edges here and also uh, finish grinding out this section so I could actually get the, the alternator in the bracket. Uh, this back part needs to be shaped and you'll see the reason why later in the video when I attach it to the bracket. It's sort of hard to describe, but basically uh, most of the section will be, will be ground down except for seven, uh, 0.75 inches on each side. And the center section will stay this wide um, and it will attach to the back of that bracket in a certain way. Okay, so anyway, the next segment will show this part cleaned up and pretty much in its final form. Right, I figured this would be a good place to uh, pick up pick up the video. Let's see, what have I done? I, I started shaping the outside of this, uh, I don't know, just to, no particular reason I did that first, but then what I did was I finished grinding this side down uh, to make more room for the bottom of the alternator, and I cleaned up. Uh, the inside here uh, made this true, made this smooth, and now what I'm doing is I'm I'm doing the final cut. And what I did was I just measured the width of the alternator, and uh, then I marked these lines here. So I'm going to grind this out, and the only thing is I have to smooth this out with the sanding drum. And then once I finish grinding this side and this side, the alternator should just drop in. Then once it drops in, you know, we'll just clean the part up and then we'll be done. Okay. Okay, I figure now's a good time for the next segue. Uh, I finally fit the alternator into the top of the bracket. And I will tell you, it took a lot of time to do this. Uh, but anyway, it, it lines up. It lines up perfectly, and here's one of the long bolts, and this will thread into the back, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to do the threads until I'm done. Uh, but it was pretty interesting. I'm going to uh, cut to the next segue, and I'll show you how I sort of, sort of shaped, shape this particular area. I thought I'd use a sanding drum, but I used a different technique, which I'll show you. Okay, well, this is sort of how I shaped this out. I mean, you could see. I'm not done yet, but it's come a long way. I mean, it looks pretty darn, pretty darn good. Uh, originally, I thought I would use a sanding drum to sand this down, but I left so much material on it, the sanding drums are just not effective. So, believe it or not, the, uh, the tool of the day is the Tyrannosaurus Rex bit. And actually, I, I, just, I just spun up the mill, and because I, I can hold this very steady, I literally guided this by hand on the mill very gently and I was able to smooth this area down and take out enough material to get the alternator to fit. 
Uh, what I did notice too is I try to put some of the uh, what's this called? Uh, yeah, Tap Magic aluminum cutting fluid. And when I put some of that on, I thought it would make it more slippery, but it, the bit really, uh, you know, the mill really bit hard. So I have a feeling I was using that, and, and it, you know, it just makes the, the bit more aggressive. So I had to dry it all off, and then I was able to, you know, machine this by hand. But, you know, for the most part, it looks pretty darn good. I, I did take a little bit of a gouge out here. I didn't mean to do that, but, you know, I'll just trim out this a little a little more no big deal but anyway all in all coming out pretty good uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to machine out this area so that it fits on the bracket and once I do that I'll drill the holes two holes in here and get it attached to the bracket and then finish it up so getting close okay time for the next segue uh, let's see uh, we ground down or mill down all of this and all of this and the whole reason for that is so that this will attach to the bracket both through the front and also through the back and you know that way once the alternators on and the belt is applying tension it won't you know it sort of won't rock because it's it's attached to the back of the bracket so that's sort of the design uh, at this point we just gotta really clean it all up so uh, Got to clean this out so it sits further into the bracket and then really uh, trim everything out. And then these areas I'm going to basically trim them down a half an inch. Uh, I'm going to cut these sections out to lighten it up a little bit. And then we'll be done. So it's looking good. All right, time for the next segue. Uh, let's see, I've spent a lot of time finishing this part up and I have to say it is looking really good. Uh, it was a combination of using the uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex bit, that long bit, and you know by hand just sort of shaping these rounded edges like this here and then just also cleaning up all the flat surfaces with the standard with the standard mill. There's a lot of glare here. You know, I had a couple mishaps. I have a little gash here, and I have a little gash back here. Uh, I wasn't too careful with how I secured the part on the mill, and it took a chunk out. But look, this is just an alternator bracket. I can always grind this down a little more to get rid of it, but I probably will leave it as is. If this was a decorative part, I would think I can take it to the TIG welder and they could fill these areas in with some aluminum and then I would grind it down and it would it would look perfect but uh, right now it looks as good as it needs to I'll worry about how I'll finish the part off whether I'll polish it or maybe make a, a brushed finish uh, but I just want to get it fitted and get it on the car uh, let's see the next step is really to drill the holes in the plates and that's going to be a little bit of a delicate operation because the holes are actually hidden by both sides of the plates and you can see actually actually how this uh, mounts I mean this thing fits this thing fits just unbelievable I mean, it's just it's just so cool when it comes out good I mean I mean look at that fit that is great and then look around the back you know, I wanted to get this alternator as close to the bracket as possible. And you can see, you know, look how close, look how close it is when it mates up. So I'm going to drill a couple holes to secure this to the bracket. I'll thread the, uh, the holes for the, for the 10 inch alternator bolts and we'll consider this uh, mission accomplished. All right, so here's the next step. You know, we're going to try to locate exactly where the hole needs to be in the bracket uh, to basically mount this onto the tensioner bracket. And you know, the hole should go right around here and come straight through and and come out around here. The problem is when you when you put this on the bracket, you can't see where the hole is. So I have to measure where this hole should be. So I came up with this idea of you know the, the whole bracket needs to needs to align here so I measured 
this distance and this distance and I put these screws in uh, in the bracket that will match up with the the actual height of the bracket and I measured it with the micrometer the outside distance and then subtracted eight millimeters so that I can get sort of the center on center point for both of these uh, then you'll see what I'll do with the bracket to locate exactly where I'm going to drill a hole and then I'll take a deep breath and drill the hole and see if uh, see if I got it right okay so I put some of the blue dye on the bracket and you know these screws are at the same height as the top of the bracket so once the blue dye dries I'm going to use the micrometer and I'm going to do sort of a sweep off of both of these holes and the intersection should be exactly where the screw needs to be. I may drill just a small pilot hole and see if it lined up properly. Uh, that way I get another bite at the apple just in case I, I missed it a little bit. Okay, so stay tuned. Okay, well, there it is. You can barely see it, but X marks the spot. So hopefully that is exactly where it needs to be. We're going to drill a small pilot hole just to see where it lines up and if it's where it needs to be, I'll drill the bigger hole and drill it through this side, uh, then I'll drill it through the far side. Alright, so far so good. So we drilled the 1 8 inch hole and it looks like it found, you know, the hole, whether it's centered in the hole is another story. but. So there's still you know enough play in this bracket you know to move it a millimeter here millimeter there uh, so I think we're on the right track so we're gonna drill the eight millimeter hole and see if it all lines okay, well, up here it is it turned out uh, the, the hole that I drilled the eight millimeter hole lined up perfectly and then I drilled another hole right here 10 millimeter hole and that also lined up perfectly so for the most part this is done okay so I'm going to mount this on the car, put the alternator in, and you can see, you know, just how tight, you know, tight this mates up to that bracket and marries up to the bracket. I mean, exactly what I wanted it to do. Yeah, I still have a little finishing work, but I'll, I'll do that at a later date. Okay, so uh, on to the next segue. Okay, well, here it is installed on the engine on the LT4. It looks nice under there. Now let's put the alternator on. All right, so I think I can say it's mission accomplished with regard to the custom LT4 alternator bracket. It was quite a saga to get to this point. Sorry for the really long videos, but it was a ton of work, and yeah, I just figured people would appreciate what it takes to, to mill by hand a, a block of aluminum. But to my eye, this looks great. I'm really happy with it. And you can see the compressor is a little wider than the alternator and the top frame is an inch wider than the bottom frame and they both clear the frame by half an inch. So let's see, I've got to get a custom belt. I've got to get the intake welded up, but I won't do that until I get the engine back in the car and figure out how I'll route the intake. And I think that's a wrap for Getting the LT4 in a super light chassis with no chassis modifications, just a lot of custom, just a lot of custom parts. Uh, the next thing we're going to work on is the front compartment, and that'll be mounting the front compartment and also installing and mounting the radiator and making a radiator shroud. Okay, so thanks for following along. Stay tuned.